G'day folks, Jason from The Utter Farm here. What today's video is going to be about, I purchased myself some grain-fed beef, and it's actually rump, and I've also got a bag of my grass-fed rump for comparison. I'm going to cook these steaks up in the fry pan, cut them up in strips, and feed them to the family and see if they can tell the difference between grass-fed and grain-fed beef. During the meat cooking process, I'm going to go through five commonly asked questions in relation to grain-fed versus grass-fed beef. First question I'm going to answer is, why is grass-fed beef generally more expensive than grain-fed beef? Number two, is grass-fed beef better for the environment than grain-fed beef? The assumption here is that it's the beef raised is either barn fed or feedlot fed. Question number three, is grass fed beef tougher than grain fed beef? Number four, is grass fed healthier than grain fed beef? And question number five, what kind of red meat can or should you eat if you have high cholesterol? Before we do the cook, we'll have a close look at this meat. So this is the grain fed. Obviously, it's a bright red in color, and this is the grass-fed. It's a lot darker. We'll get them out of their wrappers, and we'll have a look at the fat content. Just by looking through this wrapper here, I know it's pretty hard nighttime with the light and the glare. That appears to have about a quarter of an inch fat around the outside of that steak. The grass-fed, there's probably an eighth down the bottom, but there's no real fat layer on the outside of that. And also, if you have a look through the marbling on the grass-fed, there's absolutely no marbling that you can see visually through that meat. Whereas if you have a look at the grain fed, there's definitely marbling on that meat and all the way through it. When I pull it out, we'll have a close look without this glare. So I've got it out of the wrapper now. We'll have a close look. As you can see, this is the grain fed. You can see there's definitely a good quarter of an inch fat layer around the outside of that. And if you have a close look through, you can see the marbling. There are those strips of white Fat you can see through the meat. There's a big bit of fat there. There's marbling all the way through that meat. We'll go across to the grass fed. Like I said, it's darker in color. There's no fat layer around the outside of that. It starts probably an inch from the end and that would be roughly that, I'd say quarter of an inch as well, but it's only on one inch. And if you try and get any marbling at all on that, I can see one bit of fat there. I don't know if the cameras are going to do any justice, but. There's no marbling or no visual fat for the rest of that meat in comparison to what's on that grain fed. We'll go ahead now and we'll throw it in the fry pan. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off cooking the grain fed piece of meat first. When I'm doing it, I've got no additives to this meat. So there's no salt and there's no pepper. It's just straight meat. And I'm gonna do that with both. So the comparison on the taste test is even. Why is grain-fed beef generally more affordable than grass-fed? Well, the majority of your feedlots give the livestock or cattle a growth hormone, which then brings them up to their slaughter weight 12 months earlier than grass-fed animals. And having said that, so there's less time you've got to spend with these grain-fed animals, which makes it less expensive to raise and less expensive to buy. Okay. Is grass-fed beef better for the environment than grain-fed barn or feedlot beef? Well, as we know it, grasses and trees like I've got around me capture carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it into the ground. Not only does that help build the trees and the pasture back and also fuel microbes, it also helps reduce climate change. Now, in comparison, check out this feedlot. How much carbon dioxide do you reckon is being captured here? Is it helping reduce carbon emissions? In addition to that, you've got to have the grain come somewhere for the animals to eat. So when it comes to the grain itself, you've got the planting, which is now more carbon emissions with the tractor. Then you've got pest and maintenance, weed maintenance, whilst the grass or the crop is growing. So they need to go through with the tractor. There's more carbon emissions and chemicals being put out in the ground. Then when it comes time to harvest, you've got to head the grain off. So there's more carbon emissions through the, through the machinery used. 
But then once you've got it headed and it's sitting in silos, you've got to get it to the processing unit. So obviously it goes on the back of a truck, there's more carbon emissions, then when it gets to the processing, you've got the processing unit itself, and it's creating carbon emissions to process that grain. Then when you finish with it, it's ready to go to the feedlot. So then you put it on another truck, and then it goes to a feedlot to feed the animals. But then when it's there to feed the animals, you put it in the back of a on the back of a truck, and you shoot it out the back of a chute, either with a tractor or truck, and put it in the trough. You think I know, or I, I'm pretty sure you realize where I'm going with this. I'll let you guys figure it out, which is more healthy for the environment. So to make this a fair test, I actually washed the fry pan out and put a teaspoon of oil in it, the same as I did for the grain fed. As you can see, that's the grain fed beef resting. I'll get this up to temperature and we'll throw in the grass fed piece of beef now. Is grass fed beef tougher than grain fed beef? Well, studies have shown that grass fed beef can have a slightly tougher texture than that of grain fed beef, purely to the fact that grass fed live natural active lives. They're actually moving around grazing for forage, like the hills I have behind me on my property. They're walking up and down these hills getting exercise. Not only the exercising, they're building their muscle fiber. So naturally they're gonna have less fat on their body and thicker muscle fibers compared to those that are a feedlot that is sitting there wallowing and eating out of a grain trough. Flat ground, no exercise, loads of fat. But having said that, I can cut my grass fed with bread and butter knife. I bought grain fed, or should I say grain fed commercial from the supermarket that you cannot cut with a bread and butter knife. You must use a steak knife and even then it's tough. But I reckon it also boils down to the way they're processed. You can have the most relaxed grain fed beef, but if he's stressed on that day of slaughter, he's gonna be tough and vice versa. If you've got a grass fed animal that you've raised and is totally relaxed on your property, the moment you go to processing day and he is stressed, you're gonna get stressed meat or tough meat. So take that as you will. So they've had five minutes to rest now. Obviously the grain fed a bit longer, but there they are there. So the next step is I'm gonna cut them up into strips and then feed them to the family and see if they can tell the difference between the grass and the grain fed. This is gonna be interesting. I've just stepped outside for a minute and I wanna explain what I've done before we actually do the taste test. So in fairness, so no one picks the tex texture difference. If you have a look, that's the grain fed and it's medium. So it's two thirds of that, it's got that pink strip through and I go across to the grass fed. I've also cooked it medium, being two thirds of that, it's still got the pink section through the middle. That way there's no texture difference. So they can't really say, well, that one's different to that because it should have the same texture because they're both medium done. Is grass fed beef healthier than grain fed? Pound for pound, grass fed beef contains lesser total fat and fewer calories than grain fed across all breeds of cattle. This reduction in total fat content influences the fatty acid composition of the beef. And one study had shown, I've got it in front of me, an average piece of grass-fed beef, which we've got right here, contains 2,703 milligrams less total saturated fatty acids, which is SFA, abbreviated, compared to 100 grams of the same grain-fed piece of beef. But not only that, multiple studies have shown that there's additional heart benefits in grass-fed beef. There's six times more amino fatty acids, which is great for the ticker or the heart. There's also higher omega-6 fatty acids, which is a polyunsaturated fat, and there's a load more antioxidants and vitamins, such as vitamin E in grass-fed beef. I've stepped in the bedroom so they can't hear me. Also, what I want to do, because there's four people in this taste test, I'm going to give two people the same lot of meat. So one person will get both pieces will be grain fed. The second person, both pieces will be grass fed. Then the other two, they'll get one of each. That way we'll know if they're really guessing because they're expecting to get two different types of meat. So what I've got them to do is close their eyes so they don't know which plate it's come off. Even though they don't know which is grass-fed and which is grain-fed, 
I'm gonna ask them, I'm gonna give them two pieces, and basically I want them to tell me if they can taste the difference first. Here comes piece number one, Dylan. Chew on that one. When you're ready for the next, you gotta remember the taste. Okay. Probably probably need glass of water so you can get rid of the taste, but here comes piece number two. So you can open your eyes. Okay. Can you taste the difference? It wouldn't be a taste thing, it would, just, it would only be a texture thing if anything, but taste wise, no. No difference. No difference, no difference. Okay, one down, three to go. Oh. Same again, Michael, I'll get you to close your eyes and give you two bits of meat. What I'll do, Sorry. open up, one bit of meat coming. Chew that piece. Second piece. So when you finish chewing that, I want to know, have, can you taste a difference? It's hard to say. Um, Taste-wise, not really. But I think the first one was like, Easier to chew through, I guess. Yeah. But yep. taste-wise, there's no difference. Yep. Yeah. The rest of the family aren't here, so what? I, there is a difference in thickness in steak, so the first one would have had a lot more moisture because it's a lot thicker steak. Ah. Uh, that's, Dylan so that's said the same was, thing. Yeah. Dylan said it was different, different texture. Yep. So what I try to do is cook them both medium so there wasn't a texture difference, but what I should have done is got the same thickness of steak because, uh, yes, because the text difference is thickness. That's There's more moisture in the thicker piece. So I didn't even think about that when I got the, but yeah, but don't say anything. Yeah, okay, that's, that's yep. So don't say that to the other members before yeah. we get them in. Next. So what kind of beef can you eat with high cholesterol? We're well, looking at the parts of the animal that have had the most exercise. So you're looking at the hip, you're looking at the rear, so the rump, back legs and the shoulders. Because generally they're constantly moving, so they haven't got time for that fat to consolidate on those areas. But around the midsection here, around the ribs that don't get exercised, that is where the fat generally stays. So I'm no butcher, so those cuts around the areas I was talking about is, with the extra lean cuts, you're looking at the sirloin steak, round, the round cuts, and such as your eye around roast, top side roast, these have around 10 grams of fat per 100 grams. Yeah, right. And, and they're, they're ideal for slow cooking or making jerky out of because they're so lean in fat. But if you're looking at for the, for the fatty areas, which you want to stay away from, which everyone likes because there's that much moisture in it, but the moisture is the fat. And that's around the midsection. So you're looking at cuts such as your prime rib roast, your, your rib eye steak, your porterhouse, your T-bone, these cuts can have up to 35 grams of fat per 100 grams of meat, compared to your lean cuts, which is 10 grams, that's 15 grams of fat extra per 100 grams of meat, that's a fair bit, so they're the cuts you want to stick to if you're going high cholesterol. So, we've got our third culprit, you'd, you'd, you'd probably know this third culprit, you see her on videos quite often, Nicole, so what I'm going to do is same thing again. I'm going to feed you two pieces of meat, mm -hmm. and you've got to tell me if you can taste a difference. Okay. There's first piece. Chew that down. Mm -hmm. So you finish that one. Eyes have got to stay closed. Then I'll give you a second piece of meat. When you're ready. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, eat faster than this when you're at home. <laughs> Righto, this is your second piece of meat. Okay. Close your eyes, keep them closed, no cheating. And when you finish that, open your eyes. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you taste a difference in the, both steaks? 
I actually quite enjoyed the second one more. Oh, okay, yep, yep. So you did have a bit of a difference? Yeah. Which one do you reckon was grain and which one do you reckon would have been grass-fed? Was the second one grass-fed? No. Oh, wasn't it? No. So that, that's all right. It's, that's all part of this experiment. So I'll bring in the last culprit now and we'll get her to have a look. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for your participation. <laughs> Don't get for my participation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Pick out my speech impediment. <laughs> really? That, one of them felt burnt though. Where you go. Where you go. You're off to me. Righto, hush in the background. Yep. Hush in the background. Quiet on set. So we've got our last culprit now. We've got Sky here. She's the same thing. I've told the rest of the family. I'll feed you two bits of meat. And at the end of it, obviously you've got your eyes closed. At the end of it, tell me if you can tell the difference. And then if you can, I'm going to ask you, which one do you reckon grain fed and which one do you reckon is grass fed? Right. So here comes your first bit of piece of meat. Eyes open up. No, no, eyes closed the whole time. Oh, okay. Mouth open. Otherwise, I can't shove it through your mouth if you've got your mouth closed. That's your first piece. <laughs> Enjoy that. And when you're ready, let me know and I'll feed you the second piece. Alrighty. So I'm just going to say one thing while enjoying that. Mm -hmm. If you can't tell the difference, there's no need to guess. <laughs> That's alright. <laughs> because we have had one person take a guess and it was wrong. <laughs> Honesty is the best um, policy. Honestly, the only thing would be that the first one was slightly fattier. That's it, but can't tell the difference taste-wise. Okie dokie. All right. Well, that's done and buried. We'll, uh, Beautiful. I'll let you know how you went now. Thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. I don't think there was any surprises there. The boys couldn't taste the difference. It was merely texture because of the thickness difference in steaks. I probably should have got the steaks the same thickness and they wouldn't have tasted that texture difference. As for the girls, they really had no excuse. At least the boys had one of each, one grass, one grain. As for the girls, I think it was all mine over matter. I think they were feeling or tasting they potentially, because it should have been a difference because there's two different kinds of meat, but they had, Nicole had obviously both hers were grain and both skies were grass. So there shouldn't have been any difference at all. I think it was their uh, mind playing games with them. The only difference is, is the health benefits or should I say the, the healthier meat was purely by all studies I did was the grass fed meat. Also not only on the human health but also environment health. But I do realise that you can't we cannot grow enough grass fed beef to feed the masses. So that's something that we've we 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 know we've got to work out. We are short in meat if we try and feed the masses with just grass-fed farms. No way possible with the meat we're consuming at the moment. But anyway, it's all up to you guys now. It's either what value do you put on your health and the environment? Are you happy to make the switch and pay the extra for grass? Or you just get the cheaper meat and then it is what it is. It's not as healthy, but that's up to you guys. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys. Where are you watching us from? And we'll catch you later. Oh, better go down and have a look at these cows. Puppies, give them some water. Hey, you reckon, Butchie? But one rush, remember, eating too much meat has been associated with certain cancers. Although less than grain-fed, grass-fed beef does contain some saturated fat. In excess... Saturated fat can raise your risk of heart disease and stroke. Therefore, eating in moderation is always the key.